Hey, you all, and good morning. Carpetbagger here, coming to you live from the gateway to the west, more specifically, St. Louis, Missouri. And we are having a very spooky week here on the Carpetbagger channel. It is Trans World Week, so we've been immersing ourselves in the, uh, the spooky, the Halloween culture that has uh, invaded the city of uh, St. Louis. So I figured it would only be appropriate to, uh, to get some very spooky lunch today. So I've come out here to Terror Tacos. Yes, this is a horror themed taco shop there. You can see the absolutely uh, terrifying pepper right there. And uh, so apparently in addition to being horror themed, this is also a vegan, a vegan taco place. And I don't, honestly, I don't eat a lot of vegan food, but uh, I'm willing, uh, willing to give it a try. So uh, let's head into Terror Tacos. All right, and look at this, a very spooky place. Do tacos, You've got cobwebs on the chandelier, some spooky stained glass windows back there. See behind the bar there, they have the uh, carpet from The Shining in the back of the bar. Also Chucky's hanging out back there as well. Oh, look at that, got a ghoulie. No, the uh, fish ghoulie up there above the bar. Always like to see the, always like to see the ghoulies represented. Oh, it looks like this table here is uh, is reserved. I think that is that is that is ghost ghost. If I'm correct, if I'm, I'm correct, the uh, I think it's a musical performer. His name is Ghost, but his body is a skeleton at the moment. I'm gonna sit here in this little nook by the window so I can uh, watch the traffic as I eat. But uh, it's really cool here. You have the different artworks, different horror characters, some really creative interpretations as well. You've got the alien from Aliens uh, attacking these other two more friendly aliens, Alf and E.T., strangling them there. That's Edward Scissorhands giving a scissor haircut to a cat with Medusa snakes for hair. So let's look at some of these tacos here. Again, I'm not very familiar with vegan food, so um, I'm not sure. It says they used seton, or I don't know how that's pronounced. Seton says it, I looked that up. It says it's a protein made out of uh, gluten or wheat. So uh, I don't know, which one of these should we try? There's the Carnage, Carnage Asada there. There's the Texas Barbecue Massacre. Some interesting things to uh, to try here. Hmm. So our vegan terror themed tacos have arrived. This is the tofu terror there. Little lumps of tofu. This is um, this is the uh, Texas uh, chainsaw barbecue. And then uh, we have the carnage asada. It looks good. And honestly, like I probably. Just just by sight. I don't think I can necessarily tell that these are vegan. It'll be interesting. I'm interested to see what they taste like. All right, look at that. I hardly know, I hardly know where to start. So what are we gonna, let's start with the, um, this is the Texas, Texas uh, Chainsaw Barbecue. And uh, so we got the, that is plant-based, plant the seton, that's the wheat-based meat. Mmm. Honestly, that one probably could have fooled me. It's got like a really nice like barbecue flavor. Like it's like really infused with barbecue sauce. Oh, it's spicy. <coughs> oh, I didn't know that to be this spicy. Some sour cream on it. This looks good. Mmm. Oh my gosh. Maybe I should. Maybe I should convert to veganism because that that is so that is so good. We got the got barbecue sauce on there, but the, the meat and it tastes exactly like meat. I don't know. I remember like vegetarian food in the '90s. I always had the veggie burgers. They were okay, but you always get a little off. I think the the artificial meat 
technology has, has reached a very promising point of that. I would have never known. If someone just served this to me and said, eat this meaty taco, I wouldn't have known. It's a really good barbecue sauce. Really sweet, tangy, spicy barbecue sauce. Mm. Well, yeah, I guess. I don't even know. Because that can't be sour cream. Because sour cream is cream. cream. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, vegan food is just way better. I always wondered, like, what do vegan people eat? Do they just eat seeds and berries? I found they have been missing out. I'm gonna soak up. And now we're moving on to the tofu, tofu terror there. So we've had the seed and this is tofu. Surely, I think I like tofu. I think I've, I know I've had it before. And this has got a different, a different type of, uh, this is more of like a, kind of a cross between a soft shell and a hard shell, with kind of a crispy, yet pliable shell to it. That's good, very good. Mm. I think so far I like the, that's the meat better. It's so good, they, you know, they have all these spices and things. I think that's probably the key to, to making good vegan food using the spices, you know, to not to cover it up, but just to, you know, gives you a chance to really use that spice. I don't know anything about cooking, but yeah, that is good. Let me try some of that tofu there. You know, by itself, yeah, that, by itself it does got a lot of flavor, but you know, when everything comes together, that's so good. I didn't I didn't realize I'd be this excited about vegan food. All right, and last but not least, here's the Carnage Asada. So I think this, this might be the same, I don't know if that's the same meat. It's similar to the Texas, but doesn't have, it's not soaked with the barbecue. But. Mm. That is so good. That is so good. Yeah, and I think I think the Texas, I think the, the Texas barbecue, my favorite. But all these are excellent. And again, I think I think this all, I think every one of these could have fooled me into um, into thinking they were me. And yes, today I am a member of the Clean Taco Holder Club. I stepped in here to use the uh, use the restroom, and look at this here. In the bathroom, watching you while you're on the toilet, is the uh, Spirit Halloween Mars Attacks alien. Always love an animatronic <laughs> in a bathroom. And then look at this, my favorite movie of uh, of all time. And the uh, little shop of horrors there. We got Seymour and Audrey too. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is a fun bathroom. Very fun bathroom. So a delicious meal here at uh, Terror Taco. And like I said, they don't vegan, non-vegan. That was that was good food. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to think if I've ever had a vegan meal before. I know if that's. I know I've had some uh, some vegan ice cream in the past that I thought was good, but uh, man, yeah, that is so good. Maybe, maybe, who knows? Maybe I'll try to more uh, more vegan food, more uh, more vegan options as I uh, travel across the country. Is any of the viewers here? Do we have any viewers that are vegan or vegetarian? Any suggestions on good uh, vegetarian or vegan food to check out? Uh, you know, I love I love you know I love trying food of all different types from all different countries, all different styles of food, and I, that was very tasty. I, I, would, I, would definitely, I would definitely come back here. I wanted to stop over here at Laclede's Landing. This is a historic riverfront area of St. Louis. There's a attraction over here that uh, that is, uh, is is one of my personal favorites. Oh, look at this jolly band right here. A band of men made of auto parts with the heads of fish 
<laughs> they're playing, uh, playing their instruments here. I wonder what song they're playing. Or what tune they'd be serenading with us with. Leave a comment in the comments section. And in this unassuming building here is the Cleed Landing Wax Museum. And uh, this, believe it or not, I, 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 I feel that this is the scariest wax museum in existence. Kind of fitting with the uh, trans world uh, event that we are having. Um, they have, uh, they have a, a historical section, but they also have a horror section that is absolutely massive. And who's in the window right now? We got uh, Vin Diesel and he's squaring off up against the Rock, I think? The Rock? Yeah, don't they have a, they at least two, I think they have like some sort of real life, real life beef there. But let's head in. Yeah, and just look at what we have in the lobby here. Have uh, Captain Jack Sparrow. I think this is, is this Kobe? Kobe? And then uh, there's Jack Nicholson's Joker hanging up there as well as uh, Harley Quinn. I think that's Poison Ivy right there. Wonder Woman. And I'm not sure who that is crawling on all fours. We got uh, Nelson, Nelson Mandela there next to Shrek. And then there's E.T. down here. And you can actually see the trail of Reese's Pieces. I used to call them Reese's Pieces when I was a kid. The trail of Reese's Pieces right there. In the ultimate showdown here, we have uh, Mike Tyson versus Bruce Lee. Who do you guys think would win? I know Mike Tyson is fighting uh, Jake Paul. I don't know, what, what do you think? Jake Paul, Mike Tyson, or Bruce Lee? Velociraptor over here. I'm not sure who this gentleman is back there. That looks like a very old wax figure. We have some of our nation's leaders here. We have uh, Barack Obama. This is uh, Kim Jong, Kim Jong Un, I think. He's not an American leader. He's a world leader. And then over here, got uh, Donald Donald Trump, right next to Vladimir Putin. This little fellow here with his top hat. And I guess we head up these stairs here to begin our tour, right past the Hulk. All right, we're sending the staircase here. Now, uh, there is two basements here that, uh, that serve as the Chamber of Horrors. We'll save that. We'll save that for last. But uh, we'll head into the uh, historic section of the Wax Museum. So here we head into some uh, pop culture figures there. And again, I don't... I'm not gonna be able to identify all of them. So if you see someone that I failed to mention, leave a comment in the comment section. Again, I'm not sure who that is in the uh, in the hat there. Not sure who uh, who this is either. But I uh, I know who these are. This is uh, Liberace. We got Michael Jackson there next to uh, John John Lennon. And Mr. Elvis Presley back there in the corner. Walked out kind of this narrow tunnel here. See the celebrities behind glass. Oh, you stay away from me. I know who you are. And there is uh, Julia Roberts there and uh, Johnny Cash there in the back. Here in the uh, in the pith helmets, I think this is Abbott and Costello, or is it? No, it's not Abbott and Costello. This is Laurel and Hardy, and that is Laurel, and that is Hardy. I don't know anything. I'm sorry. <laughs> And here, here's just something about this this wax museum that is that is sets it apart. So we're, we see Steve McQueen there on his motorcycle, 
And then just randomly over in the corner is this guy. Like, who is this? Like, why is he so terrifying? Why is he wearing a Letterman jacket? Who are you? Let's see, uh, Patrick Swayze there. Miss uh, Whoopi Goldberg there in the back. We got a little Denzel Washington. I don't know if you can hear that. There's like an electrical sound effect. I don't know if that's probably coming from the uh, from the Chamber of Horrors. Oh, I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember. I know this is a, a comedian, and uh, he played these two different roles: the male and the female role. There, these are both uh, both the same person. Again, feel free to <laughs> inform me in the comment section. And this is. Uh, it's uh, Humph Humphrey Bogart. Humphrey Bogart. And, uh, oh man. And this trumpet player here that, ah oh, man, I don't, there's so much I don't know about trumpets. So it's an interesting path that we take through the museum here. Okay, this is telling us to go this way, so we don't head in there quite yet. We head that way past the, <laughs> past the terrifying clown. So, yeah, we're not even in the Chamber of Horrors yet. We're already having to slide past this clown, this clown here. All right. Oh, there we go. Got the Star Wars section up here. You got C-3PO Chewbacca there. The whole gang's here. Got uh, child Darth Vader. Even, uh, even Watto, even Watto and Jar Jar showed up. Okay, so the building is three stories, and plus there are two basements, so five floors of wax figures here. We start by climbing the stairs to the top, and then winding our way, winding our way down. And it looks like we start up here with uh, some sports figures. Mr. Michael Jordan. A, uh, a member of the Cardinals baseball team, which is the local team here in St. Louis. And, uh, okay, I think that is Babe Ruth. And these two actually have uh, handy name tags down there by their feet. It says Jackie Robinson and Hank Aaron. You can see there's a few baseballs there in the windowsill. Some history on the wax process. We got uh, Madame Tussaud in her uh, wax studio here. Who is that that uh, Madame Tussaud is cooking up there? And again, these all have name tags, so I can uh, I can let you know who they are. This is Alexander Graham Bell over here. He by the telephone. That only makes sense. We have Howard Hughes in the back. He is, uh, he is saving jars of his urine and wearing um, Kleenex boxes on his feet. Actually, it looks like he's actually just got normal shoes. Normal shoes on. There's Albert Einstein next to uh, Mark Twain, two of the most uh, beloved mustached men of all time. And uh, Salvador Dali back there. Thomas Edison here. You know that's Thomas Edison because he's got that uh, light bulb in his hand. And uh, George Washington Carver, who can be identified by the jar of peanuts on the table behind him. And then two civil rights legends here, Martin Luther King and Mahatma Gandhi. Here we have Christopher Columbus, who was famous for discovering a place that was already completely populated with people. Charles Lindbergh here. I'm uh, really sorry. I'm really sorry what ha about what uh, what happened to your baby. Neil Armstrong here. I do like how he is on the surface of the moon, but he's uh, not wearing his helmet. Um, I don't know. I uh, I guess you know if he's wearing his helmet, you probably you, you really couldn't see his face. Elizabeth Taylor there. This is uh, someone named Richard Burton. And we have a uh, just a couple of popes hanging out over here. 
Uh, I think that, I don't know who these popes are. They're popes. <laughs> they definitely are, are dressed like popes. And uh, is this, is this, oh, is this, is this Buddha here? Seated in the, in the, in the sitting position there? I'm, I'm not sure. And uh, I'm not sure who this is either. It's Napoleon there. I'm thinking, thinking that might be Alexander the Great. And, um, and I don't know who this is. These old school wax museums. I really love these uh, classic Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs wax figures. You got uh, Dopey there. You got, uh, got about, yeah, you got about, uh, got about six to eight dwarves in here. I just love how the animation translates into wax. Uh, some of the dwarves up there. See the Planet of the Apes here. That is, uh, is Dr. Zaius. Dr. Zaius, Dr. Zaius. Dr. Zaius, Dr. Zaius. And, uh, back here is, what? It, oh, okay, I was looking at the Planet of the Apes here. It looks like we got, uh, a mashup between the, the Matrix and Star Trek behind her. Hallway of Presidents in here. George Washington. And they don't have all of them. They don't have all the presidents, but they got a good, uh, a good handful here, Mr. Lincoln, Mr. Kennedy, Mr. Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Truman, I think. And we got the scruffy-haired rascal, Mr. Ronald Reagan. There is uh, George W. Bush, Lyndon Johnson. Jimmy Carter, that's Gerald Ford, and uh, Richard Nixon here. And then who's this at the end? Is that, I think that's, is that Teddy Roosevelt? Is that our buddy Teddy Roosevelt? We head back to this pathway here. I guess this SWAT uh, team member is protecting the presidents in this room. Oh, there we have the, uh, the end of, uh, end of World War II here. It's actually a very similar display the Josephine Tussauds Wax Museum in Hot Springs, Arkansas. I um, I don't know. I wonder if these some of these figures are from a uh, maybe a closed down Josephine Tussauds. Um, they they also have the uh, the Seven Dwarves at Josephine Tussauds as well. But yeah, we got all the uh, all the allies here gathered in this uh, in this wreckage here. Okay, and we come out here on the other side of the Planet of the Apes display. And yes, we have uh, we have uh, Will Smith there, along with Tommy Lee Jones' The Men in Black. There is uh, from The Matrix, from The Matrix, The Matrix. Oh, why can't I think of his name? What is his name? What is his name? Morpheus is his name. <laughs> and uh, there's Spock. And Captain Kirk over there. And I must say, you can really tell the similarities between Michael Myers and Kirk in this uh, particular wax figure. All right, we head down this back staircase here. Into here, where it's very, very dark. Oh, wait. Is there... It's very dark in here. You can't see the... Wax figures, okay. I have some biblical wax figures. I think that's Moses. It's like the Charlton Heston Moses. And wow, oh, some of these are cases are empty. And it's really dark. Who's that in front of us? I'm gonna turn a light on here. Oh. Some sort of uh, some sort of leper from the Bible. I think this is uh, Daniel and the Lion's Den here. Yeah, some of the lighting is off, so I'll have to take a peek in there. Okay, see Jesus there holding a holding a young child. Yeah, more Jesus in action over here. Uh, some biblical scenes in here. I think that's uh, Jesus there, but I'm not sure uh, who these three are. Okay, see these people here gathering to watch Jesus. If this is maybe the uh, 
Sermon on the Mount here. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, that is the Sermon on the Mount. And then we see the Last Supper here. Oh, Last Supper is always, uh, always a popular choice in wax museums. And down this hallway we see the crucifixion. It's Jesus in the middle and then the two thieves on the outside there. And then, uh, is that Mary down there? This is an interesting display here. It almost looks like there's two Jesuses in this uh, in this display. I'm not really sure what they're trying to portray. They have some superhero figures in here. Now these are not wax. These are more like uh, these are like displays, maybe made of resin or plastic, or something like that. This is the guy from Halo. I don't know. It seems like another maybe video game character. Yeah, Spider-Man there, and uh, Captain America. This old Iron Man, and another Jack Sparrow. We had a wax Jack Sparrow in the lobby. Indiana Jones. I guess these are kind of like, you know, giant action figures in a way. It's Laura Croft from Tomb Raider. And uh, one of the Power Rangers there. I think this is the Red Ranger. The uh, world history sections. These, some of the uh, European royalty here. It's Henry VIII. I, I find that you find in the, like, the really old school wax museums, you often find uh, Henry VIII. It's like he was like a really big figure at uh, one point in time. And then, uh, okay, this is Prince Charles and uh, Princess Diana and uh, various other royal folks and uh, someone's royal baby. And I think we have made it through the historic section of the wax museum. Now we just need to head down and do the Chamber of Horrors. And here we go. So we head into the chamber. Already got some ghouls greeting us on the outside. It's like someone there has been tarred and feathered. You got some serious spookiness in here. You look over your shoulder every step. You never know what's lurking. Oh, what's that? Oh, okay. Yeah, some of them, some of the figures are animated. You just never know. Oh. Jeez. Creatures behind the, behind the fencing there. Okay, I remember hearing this electrical noise throughout the rest of the museum. It's all coming here from uh, from their Frankenstein. And uh, yeah, look up there. There's like creatures looking down upon you from the rafters. I right, got Michael Myers back there. Got some sort of human butcher back there. So I just wanted to show this. The only restroom in the building is here in the Chamber of Horrors. So if you want to use the bathroom, you have to go to the Chamber of Horrors, otherwise you have to hold it. But you have to walk past all these uh, all these creatures while you're uh, trying to get to the bathroom. Oh look, to get to the men's room you have to walk past this guy who's like completely in the dark here. And yeah, while some of these figures are behind the fence, some of them are just out in the open and shrouded in darkness. Oh yeah, look back here, I have this eyeball-headed weirdo in the corner. See these bodies here, stacked up. Wearing a Metallica shirt. Jason there. 
Now who's this guy back here? This rocking figure in the chair. Oh yeah, you can walk this hallway. This narrow hallway here. All these creepy figures. Oh, who's that? Why are they wearing a back backwards baseball cap? Sort of uh, some sort of vampire there in the coffin. And a doctor. The patient there. Oh, those horrible noises. Oh my gosh. Oh, look at this. This is basically basically a haunt. Basically a haunt. Oh my god, yeah, some of these are just terrifying. The creatures. Here we got the alien. Oh, look at that. There's Sasquatch. Oh my goodness. There's a, a gray alien as well. This way here. This says Chamber of Horror right here. We have Alfred Hitchcock. Does that mean the cha Chamber of Horror is just beginning? <laughs> so we're uh, headed down into the uh, sub basement here. Oh my gosh. This building is so creepy. These figures are so creepy. Oh my gosh. Whole room in here. I guess we go. Okay, follow the arrows. Go this way. Hopefully, nothing jumps at us. Oh, that's the fa Phantom, Phantom of the Opera there. Oh, I think this is uh, this is Jack the Ripper here. That's pretty ominous. You see, good look at his face. I think this is kind of a medieval torture area. Okay, this is a hunchback, hunchback of Notre Dame, Notre Dame, back there. I was to say, this is a dead end, but uh, okay. They have this same figure at uh, Josephine Tussauds as well. So I'm wondering if there's the remnants of an old uh, Josephine Tussauds. Oh my gosh. Unsettling. Pinhead. There's so much, so much horror. Look at the eyes there. And look at that eye there. That's even worse. Oh, yeah, look at this scene here. The skeleton. There's a guy with his head is just a brain and eyes. Oh, there's oh oh there's Reagan there. Is she gonna do it? There she's doing her doing her thing. Let's hope she doesn't spew on us when she's done rotating. Oh, that's creepy. And then uh, Hannibal Lecter. I think this is the second Hannibal Lecter. Didn't we have one? Uh, didn't we have one earlier? Oh jeez! Firecrackers. Freddy Krueger here. Whose bicycle is this? Mr. Ghostface <laughs> through there. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's so dark. Like, look how dark it is. Hold on. Put, it, put it by the flashlight. Their face. The most bizarre and brutal series of crimes in America. It's the Wolf Man. The Dracula. You know, some of these are like really old wax figures, and some of them are more modern props. I don't even know. This is just a guy. I don't know who he is or why he's in the Chamber of Horrors. 
Oh, look at that big baby. Big scary baby there. Oh my gosh. Well, this part's a little confusing here. We have the clowns. They're playing clown music. But then we have Harry and Marv, the wet bandits, with the paint spilled on his face. The clown chattering there. He's got the paint spilled on his face. He's got his hair burned off. But we're at the circus. The wet bandits at the circus is the name of this display, <laughs> I think. I'm assuming that's the name. What is happening? Oh my gosh. And look at this. This is another confusing scene here. You see kind of like a trashy living room. I think this might be, I think this might be an old exhibit on drug abuse. Do you see like the track marks on that person's arms? You see, uh, I don't know, is that Jodie Foster back there next to the Bob Marley poster? Again, very confusing, but most confusing is uh, Macaulay Culkin passed out on that uh, filthy beanbag there. Yeah, this scene, this scene just, I this is the most, possibly the most puzzling, horrifying scene in wax museum history. Yeah, mixed in with like the old classic wax figures, you have these these more modern, like uh, consumer grade animatronics. Oh, watch out! Some sort of Komodo Komodo dragon there. Oh, there's the devil, the devil himself. Oh, and speak of the devil, there's Mr. Anton LaVey, but it looks like Anton LaVey, you know, founder of the Church of Satan, but it looks like he actually maybe sprouted, sprouted some horns there. And perhaps most fitting for a chamber of horrors back there amongst the skeletons, amongst the ghouls, amongst the devils, we have Mr. Adolf Hitler, the worst man that ever lived. And here we head out through the exit. A few more bonus figures here. Got uh, the Earth, got uh, Arnie. And who's this little fellow here? It's an interesting, uh, interesting little character. And then Nosferatu there. And then this gentleman here, this uh, police officer known as Officer Waxy. Always, always an experience here at the Cleese Landing <laughs> Wax Museum. Wow. And we are back once again at the America Center. They're actually going to be uh, having the Ah uh, Scares tonight, which is a uh, awards given out in the haunt industry, and I've actually been uh, invited to stop by and attend. around and are now almost legacy. All right, so let's get started. We will start with our, uh, our Vendor Excellence Awards, which is for the uh, new business which is under five years in operation. Oils and ghouls, haunters, and esteemed members of the haunt community, it is with great gratitude that I accept this award on behalf of Savage Silicone. They foster love for Halloween in their neighborhoods and encourage people to go out and explore more. This year, this year's winner uh, truly encapsulates that spirit of community. When it began as a simple display and has evolved into an experience spanning eight houses over the last 23 years. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the 2024 Home Haunter Award goes to Stanley House. But I feel like this room and this room only, um, you people get us. <laughs> the 2024 Board of Directors Award for Legacy Haunt goes to Fright Kingdom. 
I can't wait to show this to everybody that said opening a professional haunted house wouldn't work. So I'm very excited about that. The first Special Recognitions Award goes to the cheerleaders of the haunted attraction industry, Nick and Beverly Pappas. And uh, y'all don't know how hard it is to pick who's going to be on the Pappas Haunt Tour of the Year. And it's very, very hard, but we're trying to make it to see everybody. chose to attend Transworld this year as a, uh, a wish from Make-A-Wish, and uh, we're proud to have him here with us tonight. Kenan has always loved Halloween and runs a home haunt called The House of Doom. In 2021, Kenan was diagnosed and successfully treated for Wilms, for Wilms tumor. After Kenan's experience uh, with the IWK Children's, hmm, Children's Health Center, sorry, it's hard for me. Uh, he decided that using the thing he loves the most, which is Halloween, I think we can all agree to that, uh, decided to use Halloween to give back, and it was a great idea. Thus, Cannon's warrior for the IWK campaign was born and continues today. I've always had this huge passion for Halloween. Ever since I was little, I mean, my dad always did. He's, he's a bit of a prankster, so he always did like this jump scare at the porch, and I just got more into it and more into Halloween decorations and animatronics. And about like six years ago, we started um, a haunted house, the House of Doom, um, and about three years ago, we started raising money for the IWK Children's Hospital, which is our local children's hospital. And as you know, we've raised $47,000. So there was a pretty big pay up. Recipient of this year's Lifetime Achievement Award, Mr. Ben Armstrong. You know, we do this, we're drawn to this because we love to build. It's almost an insanity, you know? We love to create. We love to entertain. And man, we love to scare people, right? And for the final event of the uh, Trans World Week here on the Carpet Bagger Channel, we're gonna be visiting Dia Los Muertos, Party with the Dead. This is their annual costume ball that they have here at Transworld. All right, we've walked in here and look at this. Hey, Freddy, how are you doing? Oh my God, I'm doing great. Jump, you jump scaring anyone here? Oh no, that was a jump, that was officially a jump scare. <laughs> Hello there, oh you got, you got some steam, there's steam coming off you. Oh no. <laughs> oh, a creepy little, creepy little convict ventriloquist dummy there. Looks like the party's getting started here. Oh my God, Freddy's out there stalking people on the dance floor. Hey, Freddy! <laughs> All the ghouls out there having a great time on the dance floor. Buttons! 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 You got your, got your, uh, Day of the Dead mask on there. All right, what we got here? We got, oh, hello. <laughs> got Nacho Libre and the mask there. Oh, the Headless Horseman. How, how are you doing? You guys enjoying the ball? Woo, we're having so much fun. You guys having a good time here at the ball? Don't be stabbing anyone. Oh, hello there, super spooky skeleton. How are you? Ma'am? Boxhead! Boxhead! <laughs> oh, Boxhead's busy. He's talking with his friends. Boxhead, how are you doing? Oh, look at that! Oh, you know what? <laughs> I love how your head is a bloody safe. That's really awesome. Now look at all these ghouls here doing the uh, Cupid Shuffle. Hey! <laughs> Always good to see you, Max! <laughs> oh my gosh. Looks like you're doing a little stream in there yourself. <laughs> oh my god.
enjoy this. Streaming zombie. <laughs> yeah, things started to get a little crazy here. Pass the ball. Oh, look at this. It's the dance is, is it for a rat, maybe? Dancing? You're what? Hello. I'm good. How are you? <laughs> All right. Cannot pronounce the name. No. <laughs> but I come to Transworld every year. I've been this for a very long time, and my daughter loves you, so we love. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Carpenter. I appreciate it. As the night goes on, the dance floor becomes more dense with monsters. You guys enjoying the ball? Absolutely. Oh my goodness. Oh, look at that. Jeez. No scares at balls. Oh, check this out here. A bat creature. And look at that. The wings. Look at the wings. Can I just take a peek at the wings there? Oh my gosh. It's amazing. <laughs> There's a lot of dancing happening in this room currently. And the sun sets on another trans world. Yes, another year of trans world metaphorically in the bag. Like I've said, this is this is one of my favorite events to come out to the year to see all the all the animatronics, all the new things coming to the uh, the haunt industry. But at the same time, you know, seeing people that I don't normally see, meeting people that I have not met before. Um, you know, a lot of people have come up to me and and you know, introduced themselves because they saw me on YouTube and you know that means a lot to me you know just being able to, to, to put a face to uh, some of the viewers out there and I want to thank everyone that came up and said hello to me everyone that uh, came up and, uh, and shook my hand it, you know, like I said it means a lot and of course if you do see me out and about you know, don't hesitate don't hesitate to come up and say hello it, it really kind of puts a perspective to me um, you know how what I do here on YouTube how in some way how it affects people out there in a, in a positive way, and it encourages me to uh, to keep doing it. You know, when when, it, when I when I have these long nights on the road, with no sleep, traveling, driving nine hours a day, it uh, oh my gosh, is this? <laughs> bye, bye. bye, giant, bye, giant mouse. And of course, it means a lot to have uh, giant rats wandering off on the street of St. Louis. I completely, completely uh, lost my train of thought. What was I trying to say? Oh yes, that it means it means the world to me to be able to to, to meet people in person, to uh, to know that I've touched people's lives out there in some way. You know, if that's the long nights on the road, traveling, getting little sleep, editing, editing till two or three in the morning and, and hopping in the car the next day and driving nine hours. Sometimes it gets rough. Sometimes it catches up with me a little bit, but it, when I see um, when people come up and, and tell me, you know, how much my channel means to them, how much, uh, how much it has affected them. It, um, it, it, it really puts it in perspective and it, and it means a lot and encourages me to keep going and keep making these, uh, these videos. But uh, from here, from here, I'm um, going back to the hotel. I'm gonna hopefully get some sleep tonight. Um, I'm gonna wake up, and um, from there, I'm going to, uh, maybe we may film something here in St. Louis before we leave, but after that, I'm going to be heading westward. We're going to be headed to uh, Colorado. Um, my sister, my sister had a baby. My sister had another baby. She already has a uh, a baby or a young lady, and now she has a son. And I'm going out there, going out there to um, to meet to meet my uh, meet my new nephew. And uh, Jen's gonna fly out there. Jen and uh, and Annabelle are both flying out to uh, meet me out there in Colorado. So I may I may miss a day or two uh, visiting family. Or I may, you know, I may step away and film. I don't know yet. But the important thing is I'm going out to, there to see family and uh, maybe have some other plans 
in Colorado after after seeing family. We'll see we'll see how it comes together. But um, thank you guys again for watching these videos. Thank you for following me along following along with me here on the uh, through the festivities of Trans World. And uh, if you like these videos, please subscribe. I travel around the world filming roadside attractions, amusement parks, museums, haunted houses, and other fun, random things. And uh, and uh, if you'd like help, sorry, sometimes I lose my train of thought, but that's okay. If you'd like to support the channel, consider contributing to Patreon. Three dollars or more gets you a postcard once a month from me to you. Also, selling enamel pins in the Etsy shop. We have personalized messages on Cameo. And of course, all those things help keep this train on the track, this boat in the water, and this dirigible in the air. Till next time, my friends. This one's in the bag.